supposed to say hey guys <laughs> what is up everybody i've got me and these two hooligans yep. over here we're gonna we're gonna have some fun today i'm pretty excited um not least of all because i get to leave again in like what time is it three, it's 11 three hours so yeah like three hours that would be our live videos at 11. thanks tony i knew that I always have to answer people's questions. They're like, what time are your videos again? And I'm like, seriously, guys, it's been like two and a half, three years. But it's fine. It's fine. In any case, so um, this year, we tootled on down to WISA in uh, Dallas, Texas. And um, we were walking around and looking at all the boot companies like we do. We like to hang out in the corral booth for a while and chat with some lovely people there. And as I was looking around their booth, I was like, man... There's a lot of really cool bling on boots this year. Um, we were walking around, and they just there was just all sorts of stuff going on um, as far as like boot anklets go for for your boots. Um, and so, for those of us that like to pretend like we're cowboys and girls, um, but don't actually need to wear a spur for utility purposes, we can still have fun boots too. And I was just like, I started playing and messing around with some things. And I was like, you can just use all your bag scraps. Like if you yep. do bag and upholstery, any type of stuff, or even, I mean, we've got a tooled example here. Just buy some fun hardware, use your scraps and make, you can make matching boot anklets for your bags. Yep. Or for your jewelry or whatever. Like this is totally an accessory that people could buy in addition to different um, things that you would be creating for them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And like for mine, I just... I really like the look of like an engineer boot or a harness boot with mm -hmm. the rigging, but I don't care for the shape of the boot. So I can put rigging on a Western boot and exactly. best of both worlds. So it's a little dark up there, but we'll, yeah. we'll pull them back here so you guys can kind of see a couple of the examples. So we've made some, and then we are just going to be, we've made one side of the shoe, mm -hmm. and we will be creating the other side of said shoe here. So you got to have the pair. Yeah. Can I get a up shot there? Thanks, Tony. What's, what's the upshot? It's the upshot. So we've got this. Uh, this is the one that Andy created. It's just a utilitarian, just, I mean, bling it up. You can put conchos on this. You can do really whatever you want, but it's it's really quite simple. And I think it just adds a fun little flair to the boot. A boot with rigging just looks good. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It's just pretty neat. So if you've got an old pair of boots and you want to jazz them up a little bit, it's even got a little stirrup under the bottom of it. And uh, so just real simple. So Andy will be creating this style for us of boot anklet is what I'm calling it. Although that really doesn't sound very manly at all now that I say it out loud. But when I move on to these, it makes way more sense. So this is a cute one that just, like, you can take this on and off if you want. You could have multiples of these. They could be your accessory. Um, do this out of veg. Tool it all up. Um, or... You could do what I've done with a thing. Put a mystery braid on top of it. If you want it to be a little bit more jazzy, we just we just have a simple piece of leather here. It's connected with a uh, rectangle ring with some chain around the anklet or around the heel to hold it in place. We've got Lindsay's beautiful SB foot shoes for um, examples because all of my boots are not right for this, unfortunately. But so cute little example like that that uh, Ryan will be working on. And then this is... A little bit. This is a little bit more blingy, guys. We use some boot chain around the heel that we have threaded with lace. We've got some of these spur backers for our crystal rivets. We've got the uh, synthetic turquoise rivet. We've got some spots on here. We've got some of our berry um, Chicago screws. And then just a bunch of fun leathers. So this is our drum dyed veg in the green. This is our drum dyed veg in the blue. Um, we've got our Dakota. That's a cool crackly leather. I love it. It's one of my favorite ones. We've had it for a long time. It's a really cool, I think it's just called Dakota something. I have no idea. Yeah. If you look up Dakota, it's going to be an option. It's a neat leather. Yeah, it's really cool, real vintage looking. So that's what I've used for the backer for a lot of this. Andy helped me set some spots because I'm really not very good at setting spots. And I focused well. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it did. And then... Lastly, we of course have fringe because no boot would be complete without fringe. So we use some lightweight biker. 
got some fringe going on here. And uh, we're going to be assembled with a tooled back. This one I've left unassembled. We will be putting it together um, with a mystery braid and just, this is kind of the whole shebang right here. But anyway, so we're gonna make the pairs to all those. <laughs> and, so, and that's what we're gonna do. And since I actually have to work, it might be a little quiet in here. <laughs> we'll it do is, our best to keep it going. It is warm in here. All that's right. Nice How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing good? Anybody? Anybody? Um, Headed to Blade in Atlanta this weekend. Anybody in Atlanta this weekend? Omar's here. Everybody say hi to Omar. Hi, Omar. Ooh, and I will be showcasing a new Sergei stamp that we just got. This awesome, like, um, flower, Mandela flower. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, pretty excited about him. He's super cool. Yeah, I'm doing the standard little cheater trick of if you've got to make a pair of things, just make one where you're happy with it, and then use it as a template for the other one. So I'm just marking my holes and such on my other strip, because I already know what size it needs to be. And we saved you guys the pain of watching us figure out all the lengths of strips and stuff. Yeah, we pretty much have everything. Really, you're just making a lot of little bracelets. Mm -hmm. And then you just have to figure out where everything's going to fall on the shoe. Like this, I wanted the chain to kind of fall, you know, under the heel a little bit. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So we've got one that falls right at the heel and then one that comes down. Um, I think they're like one link different in length. I think it's two. <laughs> two links? It's two yeah. links different. Yeah. So it's very, very small. Small. But I just think I'm just so excited. Yeah. Like bling up those, bling up those shoes. Like these are an awesome shoe on their own, but yeah. now they're super cool. And now you can Most accessorize. Right. Yeah. Sneak in here and punch my holes real fast. There's just this little baby one. All right. I'll go get in the hole. A handful of holes. Thanks, bud. Queen looks like she's sitting on a throne. Hmm? Yeah, this is my very fancy stool. Boy, I'm used to me and Anderson's like, what is like 50 ounce rawhide mallet. <laughs> Susan's going to be at Blade this weekend. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, you got to try a little bit harder with that mallet. Yeah, I, I'm used to only swinging once for everything I do. It's made me lazy. It's made me soft. No, oh, no. <laughs> I always use overweighted mallets for everything, though, Denny. It gives me a hard time because I do all my tooling with a 24-ounce mall. That sounds terrible. You oh, get, like, it. carpal tunnel. I don't, uh, I don't ever have to hit stamps twice, even when I'm doing, like, basket weaves. <laughs> oh, Andy, mm -hmm. you forgot rivets. I mean, I forgot rivets. <laughs> I have rivets. You got extra small nickel plate? No, no they're, they're black. black ones. Ah, I'll be right back, sorry. These kids. I know, it's like I've never done this before. I just started today. Susan, do you have a booth or are you going to shop? Let's see. Let me go ahead. So um, we've got this huge buttonhole punch because for this one, it all connects with buttonhole. Is the Blade Show? Is. The Blade Show is the largest knife show, I think, in the world. It's very large. Um, this. It is custom and um, manufactured knives. So you get uh, both worlds. You get the ABS world as well as your like CRKT, Spider Co. All of those things. Uh. Yeah, I don't have the sharpest slot punch in the world. Button Spider punches. There it is. That isn't one I've done my usual maintenance on recently. They have everything, Susan. Literally, there's everything. Hi, Chevy. 
I'm also, Chris Andre with Slickball that's going to be there. And he has sewing machines. I'm not sure what machines he has, but he does have sewing machines. He just stopped in yesterday. They were on their way down. Nice fella. Uh, yeah, he's great. And um, as soon as we get this, you can steal them. Oh, you're good. And so if you are a leather crafter and you're looking for some leather goods, um, Slick Bald will be there, so check him out. I think... I think he said that they're going to be in one of the atriums, not the main room. Nice. So being, being me, my design here is really uh, simple and straightforward. It is just a little strap, like a tiny little belt basically. My rectangle rings and my chain. That's it. Nothing is super complicated, uh, very fast assembly, and I think, yeah, like Liz was saying, a great way to eat up some scrap and get a cool end product for your booth. Yeah. It's really pretty. It's oh, it looks little, better on that one than it did on the first one. It does. I'm hitting it harder. Uh, a little bit. Maybe my leather is as wet as it should be. Let's see. This way. So this is one of our new Sergei's. I think it's still in process. But yep. it should be up um, shortly. But that will be one that you guys can look out for. It is the thir 331. 331. And... The only uh, technique of note on mine, really, that I'll explain in a little bit, is that these tool pieces are mirrored. Uh, which I did not think until recently. I saw it in a magazine. Oh yeah, just make a tap off out of the first one so that your second one can be a perfect mirrored image, not just guessing at how to tool pairs of things. Yeah, that Leather Crafters Journal, I know we were talking about it last week mm -hmm. after I got back because they're the one that hosts the show. And um, yeah, if you're not subscribed to the Leather Crafters Journal, you definitely should be. Uh, nice thing is we've got these unwelded rings. Um, so I can just take some pliers here and twist them open so I can fix them on the chain and they'll be there forever. And also fix my tooling piece on there as my boot dangler. Andy, how's it going? Um, a quarter of the way there. Yeah? What are you doing? I'm um, just, uh, Making my straps pre like kind of pre-made to fold over one of the rings. So how wide are your straps? These are three quarter inch. Okay. I think I did most of mine at one. Yeah. And you did three quarter? I did three quarter. Yeah. I started at one, but I wanted to put a buckle on mine. And I just wasn't super crazy about the size of a one inch buckle on a boot. Yeah. It's I, a little chunky. Yeah, I agree. I didn't use any buckles on the ones that I did. I used a button stud and then the Screws. The, yeah, the one that's on here is just connected with Chicago screws um, that you'd have to take on and off. But it doesn't have a loop around the bottom, so it comes off really easily on top. Yeah. And so that's that's also what I was discovering, is I like the look of a three-quarter inch buckle as opposed to a one inch. Mm -hmm. Maybe on a on a man's boot, a one inch might be okay, but it's still, a little, really good. Yeah, yeah. it's still a little chunky. <clears throat> yeah, one other little note. If you're using these unwelded rings, uh, square around, what have you. Uh, don't pull them open, just twist them slightly. That is correct. Because if you pull them open, you will never get them back into shape and fully closed again. Yeah. It's I a think nightmare. That is, with all jump rings. Yep. Always twist. You always twist. It helps if you have two pairs of pliers, you can grab each side. Yep. Twist and, it off. And I've got my, you know, perfectly matched pair of channel locks and lasting pliers. <laughs> And now I'm just making sure I have this all threaded the right way, because, like I said, mine was really easy. It's done. <laughs> uh, the only trick is getting your measurements for how long your chain needs to be. Because um, these chains cut really easy if you've got some bolt cutters or some sturdy tin snips. Uh, yeah, so that's just our curb chain. So I think if you're on the website, we sell it by like the foot. like purse and bag and boot chain or something bag like that is what it's chain. called. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's sold by the foot. You can buy how many ever linear feet you want of it, and we'll cut you a section. 
I was talking to some folks yesterday, told them I, I love this stuff because if you are a bag maker, it's how you take a nice little clutch from a $50 bag to a $100 bag with not a ton of effort. Yeah, people like their chain these days. They look great. They do. I think a little clutch hand looks awesome on a chain. Boom. And all right. So we got my center. Yeah, that one does look way better than the first one. It's a lot. The impressions are good. So that all done. We are going to highlight. Nope, we're not. We're going to antique first. Uh, let's see. I mean, seal? Standing leather, we're doing uh, yes. boot decorations. Bye, Dean. No, but I also <laughs> don't want to spray that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. Yeah. I'm going here. For some reason, my brain really struggles with getting the right one and left ones lined up on the correct side of the boot. It just it just stops working. <laughs> Bummer when your brain stops working. Yeah, just kind of short circuits slightly. All right, so we've got this guy drying. Look at that stamp, guys! Isn't that cool? I'm super, I'm super excited about. It. So keep keep your eyes peeled for this guy. Lefty and I picked out some good ones. Yeah. Yeah. And then that concho just goes right in the middle. Sharp. I think on this one I had stamped all the way across because I wasn't expecting to put the concho. And once again, this is a, I think this is actually a one inch strap. So this is one inch because I didn't use a buckle. So I was able to go a little bit wider without having the bulkier buckle option. And then for this one, this is the fringe. This is just my pattern for the fringe. It was really simple. Um, this is kind of boot specific because I didn't want the fringe to go lower um, than the heel of the boot. So depending on the boot that you're making it for, how tall it is, is kind of the length that you um, will make the fringe. And so this one... You can see I made the tool danglers too long. <laughs> so I should have made them smaller. So this one kind of just loops right around. And then everything... This, this reminds me of like the crown of your head. So you're going, like you're making a headband and you kind of want to hit that temple section before you loop back around. So this is what I consider a little bit on the, the farther back than center of the boot is a good kind of spot to call it. Sure. You know, like you're, you're coming back a little bit farther than the center and it just kind of will brush the ground right there. So I just kind of had fun with that shape. And then we have a really snazzy um, eighth inch fringe die. So I was able to take it, line up the die, and click out this fringe. Um, real fast. Yeah, real fast. But if you're hand cutting that at home, it, it won't be awful. You, nah. you cool. can cut a little bit taller. I don't know if that's what we actually froze or just my nope. screens. Okay. Just, just my screens. screens. Everything's good. Be doing work. Oh, stop that. Wow. Yeah, I've got this pair all done. I'll let yeah, Liz show them off. And they're simple. Like I said, those little tooling bits, you can do whatever you want. You can make a handful of them. And if you, you know, sell a set of the straps, it can come with a bunch of different options of decorations you can yeah. send with it. Uh, but a fun little project and good tooling practice. It was, it was fun trying to do a fully finished tooling design that small. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed that. It was a good time. I used my little baby beveler that I think I've used twice before this. Baby beveler. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be drying. Yep. So what I want you to do is start threading. So this one has the lace through the chain, which stiffens it up a little bit, gives it a little bit of body, um, and is real nice. So I'm going to give you that chain, Looks and you can good. start. It does look really good. And I think on this other one, we are going to do one green and one brown. So this is just brown kangaroo lace, but this is uh, the green veg tan that Andy split down real thin um, and just did quarter-inch lace. So do one of each. Do you want green on top or on bottom? It doesn't matter. I'm not worried about it. Um, and then we also have our brand new, I want to call it cork, but I don't think that that's what we called it. Ghost wood. Ghost wood. Yeah. wood. It's the turquoise ghost Leather. wood. But it does kind of look like cork. Um, the cork we sell. Yeah. So this is that. I did a mystery braid out of it for 
the front of that. So I'm going to get these braided up real fast. I've already cut my three. This is just over an inch wide. I think it's like an inch and an eighth wide. And then we are just mystery braiding. So for those of you that haven't ever mystery braided before, you're really missing out on life here. So we're going to we're going to do it. If you just have a three strand, this also works with a five strand. You just count to five instead of counting to three. What? Yeah. So from the front to the back, you're going to flip your tab at the bottom like that. You're going to flip it from the front into the back, and then you're going to braid three times. So one, two, three. So we flipped on the right hand side this time. So this time we're going to flip on the left. We flip it out, that braids the same section at the bottom, so then we're just gonna braid one, two, three. If you had a five strand, you would go one, two, three, four, five. So then, everything should be straight again at the end. You have three unencumbered strands. We're going to flip one more time from the front to the back, and then we will braid one, two, three, and then we will flip again on the left, front to the back, and then that finishes out the braid. I'm not going to do it again because then it's going to be too tight and I didn't like it. So we are just going to leave it that braided twice. And, and when you've got it in your hands, it's really easy to tell where you're supposed to flip it through. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty clear once you've, once you're holding on to it. Watching someone else do it, it's, it looks way more confusing than it is. It's really very simple. And then we're just going to do the same thing over here. Flip. I think my center string is a little bit fat on this one, but that's fine. One, two. Three, flip. I'm cutting one, a sneaky little taper two, on my lace here three, to make it spread easier. Flip. One, two, three, and flip. Yeah, getting the length and number of braids on your uh, mystery braid right is so tough. I, I have no idea how you made like mystery braid belts. I would have lost my mind. Well, because I start short. And then you don't cut the tip until you're done. So until you get the braid to where you want it. So you cut because it always shrinks. So when you braid stuff, it always shrinks. So you're going to cut. Like I always start with just like the regular length of my belt, right? So I lay out my belt and I'm like, okay, this is the standard length that I would make my belt. And then, and then you have, let's say, a foot, a foot and a half left on the end, depending on how thin it is or how much you intend on braiding. If you plan on braiding it really tight, you need to make sure that maybe you have two to three feet just in case. So you have your strip, you have extra on the side. So you start, you cut your turn back where your buckle goes, and then you start cutting your braids. And I would cut them like where I would lay it out, probably where the braid would be the complete. Oh, look, I have a mystery braid belt. See, on. I pointed at it when I was talking. So I start on this end. This is a five strand. Um, so I would just probably, I would cut my length to where it would like wrap completely around me. Yeah. Right? And so then you start braiding. And then when you're done, you're going to put it around yourself or whoever your customer is. And you're going to be like, is that long enough? Like, is, are my braids over here? So if your braids do come over here, then you're like, all right, I need to cut some more braid. You cut some more braid. You braid it. This is why you need to leave an extra long tag at the end for your adjustment end. And then you just braid until you're happy with where it comes out. Um, and then you cut your, your turn back. Or not your so, turn back, but your your. So start with your turn end. back and then braid until you have enough. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> then yeah. cut your tip. Yeah. That's smart. And then, I mean, the amount of length that you lose depends on how tightly you braid and the thickness of your leather. Yeah. So it's hard to, like, give you an average of, like, oh, you're going to lose 8 inches, you're going to lose 10 inches, whatever, um, because it's all determinant on the so thickness much. and the length. Yeah. So. I'm surprised the 5 doesn't look more different from the 3. No. It doesn't. It very similar. It's I've done seven before. That was fun. It was terrible to cut, but it was fun. I'll call it fun. I really like a five. A five is good. So is that just to get the thinner strands making up your braid? So it's yeah. not really a different braid pattern. Correct. Yeah, it's just thinner strands. And then also, like, if you're doing, this is an inch and a quarter belt. Mm -hmm. So those would be really fat. Like, it would just be oh, really fat. Oh, strands, yeah. Yeah. And I don't think it looks as good. That's a good point, too. An inch and a quarter belt is going to end up being, like, a one-inch belt. Yeah, exactly. You braided it. Yeah, so it braids down. So if you start a little bit wider. Inch and a quarter, I think, is the sweet spot for belts. That's where the best looking hardware is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for a women's belt, like, I, I don't like wearing an inch and a half belt. I always make inch and a quarter usually for myself. Aw, thanks. Hey, you know, Denny does not wear cowboy boots. He doesn't. He, like, today he has on, like, fishing shoes. 
Like I walk in there and they're oh, like, really? yeah, they're like kind of like open like leaves, it's like a river shoot. Yeah, awesome. and it kind of made me smile. Little thing. Ooh, super cool. Yeah, I got all your stuff shipped yesterday, guys, on the stones. It took me a couple days to, to get that out, but I got all the rock shipped yesterday. We got the rest of the live shopping order shipped out yesterday. All right. This is still dry. I think that's still dry. I'm still going to give that a minute. So then for this one, for this is my fringy set. These are all the pieces that go with my fringy set. This is the back panel. And then all three of these are the front. They are layered together. So this goes in the bottom. So the fringe goes under this one. And then my mystery braid goes over the top. So this one already has all the holes in it, which I need to punch in my other ones. So the mystery braid lays there. And then the Dakota goes over the fringe to hide the top of the fringe. And you could glue this down if you want, but I left it mobile because the bottom layer um, is shorter than the top layers. Because once everything rolls over your boot, your distances are a little bit different. And, I, you know, I've had it on this boot. I didn't actually wear the boot because they're lindsies, but... Um, and her feet are a lot smaller than my feet because she's little. She's a little lady. Um, so in any case, I kind of just left everything loose to lay. But that's that's what we're looking at here is that kind of a situation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes. Yeah, this is, I think I've run into a lot of the same things of like when I first started making bags of like, oh, I'm doing 3D leather work now. Yeah. Uh, on these, you are as well. So yeah. it's... A lot of what you expect to stretch this way and that, well, now it can stretch in all sorts of directions. So there's definitely some fun learning curve to it, which I, I always enjoy. Yeah, I kind of avoided punching any of the holes in my things um, until I had all the layers assembled and I could lay it over the boot. And then I kind of like marked the hole and I was like, okay, this is a good spot. Mm -hmm. And then I laid it out and then you, your layers are a little bit different length. I, uh, I got my slot punch. Uh, I got three quarter down here. Oh, okay. Uh, I got a lot of mileage out of uh, my tailor tape on this project. Just a good cloth tape measure. Mm -hmm. um, yes. They're awesome. If you don't have one in your leather working kit, I highly recommend it. They're cheap and they're rad. Yeah. It's nothing you can't measure. You're basically just making a ton of little bracelets. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Ends up. I had someone ask us already just around the shop. You were like, oh, you guys going to make patterns for these? It's like, not really. It's a series of straps and hardware. Yeah. Just have fun. And so then for the button studs on this, I have a uh, 10 millimeter. This is just our regular medium button stud. So this is a 10 millimeter um, button stud. Which was, I wanted a good size one. I didn't want a little one because I was, you know, if, you're, if your heels knock together, I didn't want... Uh, it coming off possibly. All right, so I do, did I get holes in everything? Yeah, you no. don't want quite as chunky as a one inch buckle, but you do want sturdy hardware on a shoe. It just, it fits the look better. Yeah. Like if you ever see like the eyelets and things on boots, they're never small. Uh, the, you know, lace hooks and everything like that are always pretty chunky. Cause it just looks, it suits it. Oh, let's see, I don't know if I can show this on the overhead, but you can see how this one's got a little bit of stiffness to it, whereas without the lace, it's just totally floppy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it just like isn't that fun, guys? I just love. It looks awesome. Andy did that. He's like, "Oh, let's weave some leather in there," and I was like, "I love this." And then it matched the Dakota leather really well, and yeah. I was super excited. So Andy's smart and stuff. It was cool. Right on lace. All right. So if you haven't seen these adorable tiny like Chicago screws with the little one. with the little berry on them. I love these. We have these in several different finishes and I think three different. We've got like a rope edge, the berry, and then I think one other. Yeah. And um the the berry concha or the berry screws. I love them. Yeah. I think these we are had them on super sale cool. like two years ago. And I bought like a bunch. Nice. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna use these for, but I'll find something. And then so I attached the top layer of the braid to this using the Chicago screw. And then guys, this is what I'm going to tell you. Sometimes these screws are really hard to get in. We had this person come in. They are semi-local to us. They make this tool that holds the Chicago screw in place, or I've even used it for a concho before if the concho is not too wide for, for this throat length here. Um, we don't 
We don't have them as of yet, but you can buy it. It's actually really cool. I'm thinking now that I did this, I was like, this is really nice. So this is this is the information. Um, just go to the website. Just I, you know, you don't, you guys don't need to email this person. You could go to the website and buy them. Um, but it's really handy for shop Chicago screw removal and um, positioning. So yeah, it's just got the the open back for your screwdriver, and then that foot there is rubber. Yeah. So, so we're gonna grip you put this down. Sorry for stealing it from you. Yeah. We'll just use it. Yeah. So you gotta open it up more. But it's pretty it's pretty neat little tool. Hold your leather down. And then you can tighten that screw. There we go. Like how simple was that? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I I hate fighting conscious. We got so many people in today that haven't been making it in a while. That's awesome. That's cool. We're so glad you guys are here. Never wears tennis shoes. <laughs> you should you should tell Josh that tennis shoes are are really pretty awesome. They're they're really quite comfortable. In fact, I like my boots, but sometimes I dread wearing them because at the end of the day, I'm like, oh, my feet are going to be so tired because these shoes are so heavy. Oh, see, I find mine really comfortable, but also wearing shorts a lot in the summer, so I'm not going to wear boots and shorts because I'm not seven. One. So we got layer number one with that, and then the fringe connects to the button stud, so button stud screw goes through like that. Goes like that, and then he just screws right down. I bet you can use that little grammar on that. You could, but these these are well toleranced. Yeah. So. Well, that post is pretty dang tall. You can. Grab yeah, it. you can actually grab it, tighten it down. All right, so there is the front, guys. So this is the front of our boot. I'm gonna take this one off so we can display. Take the both of them off. I make the hole the right size. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind if you are running lace through your chain, uh, keep an eye on your chain to make sure you don't have twists in your links, and keep an eye on your lace to make sure it's grain side up the whole way out. Yeah. Because uh, both of them want to fight you and make you look like you don't know what you're doing. And then there's my finished one. So fast. So, yeah, that's it. And then all of these parts are interchangeable, which I just think is the most fun. So that fits nicely down on the heel, just like that. We got fringy top there. And then just fun hardware accents. All this hardware is exposed. So I didn't want, you know, I didn't want just a Chicago screw. Like use one of the fun ones. Make it add just a little bit of bling, a little bit of texture. And this, this fits really just like a spur would. Connects with the button studs. And then that just comes down. And I love, this is one of our new conchos. Um, I don't have it. I think we left the bag in bag? the other room. You brought the new one in a bag. Then I... Yeah. There oh, there it is. All right. So, yeah. new concho. Royal flower. Yeah, it's sharp. Yeah, we got it in a couple different colors, I think. At least I saw a red one out there that was pretty cool. So, that is number one. We'll finish this one up once it's dry and put that together. But that's what we got going on here. I just realized on mine, if you're into like color coordination, your chain with your tooling on it just loops over the strap. So you can make a bunch of different color straps. Yeah. And swap them out whenever you want. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I was, I love fringe guys. I just think fringe is great. Um, fringe and mystery braids. I, yeah, fringe and mystery braids. So, and then just, just have a good time with it. A slight amount of geometric stamping. That's right. That's the Liz design. So, all right, so that is that version. Bling it up with all the hardware you want, have fun with it, do your thing, Alrighty. So the next we have, um, put this back in here, I don't need it yet. We have this one, which is gonna be a group effort. So he's threading the chain, which is almost done. And then I'm going to need Andy to set these spots because I am not good with spots. So I did a little, this is my little design and I had, I was like, oh, we could do like graduated spots, you know, because guys, I'm really into like the whole hole punching thing right now. So I was like, 
the graduated spots are just an alternative to hole punching. Um, but this is what we got, and that's so that's kind of fun. So you kind of see the the line here, and you can you could definitely do more. You could put this you know closer, and then do a couple small ones. Um, spots are just a lot of fun. They're not great fun to set, but Andy's gonna do it, so I don't have to. Here you go. Well, you gotta mark all the lines. Uh, okay. These these heel pieces, um, they're just draw and cut. We don't have a die or anything for them because you can make them look. I mean, just however you want. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I had a strap, so I drew just two straight lines, or I think I did, I was like, okay, this is what I want the width to be. So I started with just the overall width that I wanted, and um, I can tell you guys what that is. I think I think it's two inches. It is. So it's a two inch at the diamond, so we're two inches tall, and then the strap is one inch. So drew the two inches, and then I just made a diamond in the back. And the whole thing, sorry, is seven inches. So the whole thing is seven inches long. That you can kind of determine based on your specific boot um, size or where you want it to sit. But mine is seven inches long, two inches wide, and then it tapers down. And this is an inch and a half concho. So it's a large, it's a large concho. And if you get into the real nitty gritty like fitment of it, uh, it is boot specific. But just some like generals, like your chain going under. Like the discs between your D-rings on the side of the boot are going to be around 7 inches. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll fit most boots. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like 10 or 11 around the top. Um, and that's just yeah. average. Um, it's nothing too specific. Yeah, I think our longest one here is 6.5. For chains, yeah. For chain, and then the shorter one is like a 6 inch. Because yeah. it was like two links different. And yeah, mine going under the boot is 6.5. Mm -hmm. uh, with 3 quarter inch hardware. So really, if you make these to a pair of boots you've got in your house, they're going to fit most boots uh, of that style. You know, if I made them for big Doc Martens, they wouldn't fit these little Red Wings. That's right. But uh, a pair for Western boots are going to fit most Western boots. May have the the little modeler me fix. Oh, modeler. Yeah, yeah. All right, there's my center. So that's where we're going to put. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen these little spur, like we have a bunch of these spur, or we have a whole bunch of different of these bezels. Rivet bezels. So yeah, they are like crystal rivet bezels. I chose the spurs because we're making spur straps basically. Um, but there's a couple, there's a, there's a couple different designs on them. Once again, different finishes. And I think they're just really cool. Um, yeah, it's a fun way to, to jazz up your project. I like it when things are jazzy. Yeah, I like it. That's good. Liz, Liz's common critique on designs I make is like, okay, so like what, make it look sparkly or something, like do something to it. Because my brain always goes straight to utilitarian design. <laughs> yeah, that's boring. Yeah, it is. No, no argument here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, the flex in the resulting chain after you've laced it will result, or will depend a little bit on how tight you pull your lace as you go. Um, but again, not a huge difference from piece to piece. And to tie them off in the end, I'm just throwing in a good half hitch. Uh, I would probably put a dab of super glue on mm -hmm. it or something as well. And Andy did uh, use some black rock on that lace, and that also kind of helps it to give some resistance. A little bit of conditioner for your for the pull there. Let's it stretch the right amount. <laughs> More than none, not so much that it's out of control. Oh, I don't actually know if that's center. Where are we center? I look center. You got a center finding ruler. Oh, okay. I do. There you go. Oh, oh magic center finder. Oh, we're good. Oh, we're good. Too good for it. I just don't want to struggle to use a tool I haven't used yet on a live camera. Ah, I see. <laughs> what, a really? No, this guy. No. That thing. A little center jig. These are a little jig uh, Andy and I had made because we saw them online, a bunch of different versions, and uh, Andy did all the work on this, really. But, uh, one of them, I don't know who did it. it back I, when I, first I, don't, I don't think we do sell those. No, we don't. No. no. This is just a little design we made, but it's really simple. Uh, and they're great because you can center find any strap. So I've got just little holes in these arms. Sorry, it's clear acrylic. 
Uh, but I've got little holes in the higher arms, and you can just pinch it down, and that's the center of your strap. No matter what width your strap is, those holes will always show you center. And they're neat. Neat little tools. We were just sitting around with the lasers nearby, tempting us one day, and made some. Just trainings, buddy. Yeah. Oh, I can show the tap off thing. See, so yeah, I have uh, for far too long struggled with making symmetrical parts for like earrings and things like that because I didn't think. Uh, so I'll show you the way I did it for these, which is by just using my first piece as a tap off. So I've got my line work cut into a. Did you see this again? Do you want this? Here? Uh, my line work cut into a piece here. Hey Tony, you want to okay. go over here? Okay. Do you want this? Let's go. So am I watching you make yours, or am I going to make? Watch him. I'm okay. showing how to do tap offs, yeah. Spray it again. Yes. Okay. Eight. All right. Good. Zoop. Zoop. All right. That's good. Uh, so I just went ahead and cut it in. This one I just did a little finger carving. I'm not doing a fully tooled one. But if you are doing fully tooled, just once you get your line work cut in, let it fully dry. Uh, so I've got this fully dry now. I'm going to grab my other piece and my... Oh. A little generously wet, uh, more than I would usually do for getting started. Uh, and then, with a good, you know, polished hammer or something, uh, just lay your first design face down on your piece, and line them up, hold them in place, and give it a couple wax. And this gives you a mirrored image of your design. And now I can take my swivel knife and trace this raised design that was left by my tap off. Look at that. So if you've got a pattern you really like and you don't feel like trying to source uh, custom carve rights for it, tap offs are great. Uh, if you've got one you intend to use more than once, like this will probably work two or three times, but if you're gonna use it a bunch, um, I would recommend letting it fully dry and then like sealing the tar out of it. Just a whole lot of quick shine or RTC <laughs> or something, and it'll last. I mean, Denny's got something that's had for years. Yep. Uh, and I love it, especially if you're trying to recreate a design symmetrically, that's what it's going to do. Um, so, highly recommend making yourself some tap offs. They're a lot of fun and very useful. Is is there anything you need to do on those, or you guys? I, guess I think we're good. So many hands to be yep. doing. Yep. Andy's Andy's going to set our rivets and spots. Uh, I can just assemble this one. Thanks for the compliment, but uh, Andy got to see me feel like a fool because I was looking through a uh, oh I can't remember what it's called Shop Talk or something maybe okay. one of the leather industry magazines, and it was like tooling earrings and showed use your first earring as a tap off. Let's go, oh my gosh. I make tap offs for a lot of stuff I do. Why have I never thought of this for my <laughs> paired projects? But yeah, I can't win them all. So I'll just cut this while you guys are doing what you're doing. All right, that should be all the spots. And so we are using, let's see here. We've got 5 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, and quarter inch spots. So biggest one, nope, that's not right. The 5 sixteenths is the biggest, and then the quarter inch, and then I went down to the 3 sixteenths for our graduated spots. All right, and then I, since you got this guy all done and he's drying, we will assemble him. Um, let's see here. We can go ahead and put these on our rings. So these are this, this specific one except for the Chicago screw that you can take off but it's a little bit difficult to get it off. This one is a pretty much a permanent um, construction situation. Um, so we got put that on. Okay, you put those on when you're done. We'll have that all assembled. Just take me a scrap piece of leather. Uh, one of any of the symmetrical things just because Tap off's rule, so I highly recommend playing with those. What have I done? Oh, putting these on. Mm -hmm. Can do. I'm the one with the pliers. Nice, Eugene. 
fringy, fringy spur straps are the best. Yeah, Liz, we didn't bring any surprises. You brought fringe and mystery braid, and I brought uh, dogwood tooling. <laughs> I am very excited for Denny's video Friday. Yes. I am in some capacity going to be in this room. <laughs> he is over there sharpening things like crazy. So on Friday, Denny will be going over just head knife, skiving, tips and tricks, all sorts of things. So if any of you out there need head knife guidance, skiving guidance, Denny will be going over all those kind of things on Friday. He's your guy, Dennis. Yeah, that's a pretty good Skyver. Yeah. Watching him use those head knives is just baffling every time. He makes it look like they're easy to use. Got a lot of practice. I'll say if you spend 20 years with him, yeah, very easy to use. If you're like me and you spend about three weeks with him, boy. Boy, howdy. A little tougher. Now I'm still absolutely in love with my Ivan mini round knife, but I think that one's a little easier to use. Is that one of our new ones? Yeah. yeah I think it's appeared in many uh, videos I've shot with Justin. Just because it's kind of my go-to these days. Uh, recently we shot a little short that I did the entire project. I guess it wasn't a short, it was a longer video. Uh, I did the entire project just using my mini round knife. So all my pattern and part cutting and skiving and everything was one knife. Which always feels good when you can do that. Nice. Yeah. Andy, are you ready to put spots on your leather yet? Mm -hmm. I'm marking holes. Okay. Oh no, one of my chains is supposed to... Alright, I'll fix that. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, since I twisted my ring, I can get it back into shape. I can untwist it. So you can do this a couple times. You don't want to do it a ton or else the ring is going to give out on you. Like that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, here you go. Man, let's do that. Hercules over here, man. So strong. What is that thing doing? Oh, it's all little party. It's hard to see on my green. They blend in, don't they? <clears throat> Yeah, when you do bend jump rings, D-rings, things like that, it's, it's not an uh, infinitely repeatable process. Yeah, you want to you do it as few times as possible. Metal gives out. Or bend it the least amount that you can get away with. Right. To get whatever on and off you're trying to do. And these chains are a little thick-linked, so you got to bend it a fair amount. Yes. Bit bigger. There we go. Now we have chains assembled. The party. And they're all twisted correctly. Doing that, you already got the sky. So you're like. just poking your holes with your all. No, I used my uh, exacto knife okay. to cut little slits. You don't but so you don't open it up too much. I just waller. Are you wallering? I'm just you wallering, boy. Poking it through right where they were. He's wallering to give it a little bit more space. Good job. Wallering sadness. I guess I'll take a look at chat. Not, there's not much going on. Yeah, not a lot going on. It looks like Eugene said that there's a concho tool that's similar to our Chicago screw situation here. I saw an ad for one in that magazine I was flipping through. It mounts to a drill. Uh, and it's like a little white, like, crepe rubber mm -hmm. uh, convec concave dome. Uh, 
So if you're doing like salary or something, that would be awesome because you're yeah. selling a lot of conchos. Or even I know like the guys when we used to make a lot of conceal and carry belts. Yeah. Like Jim would install the Chicago screws for the 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 buckle um, with a drill. With an impact driver. And so he would just stick it because all all of our table tables have poundo on them. So he would just push into the table with the drill and screw it in. And a lot of times, like if they're if they're pretty decently made, you know the the threads aren't gonna fight you that much. Um, right. And so it would it would screw in pretty well, just with the poundo on the table. Yeah, poundo is a wonderful table surface. We expect a new boot goofing reel. <laughs> Chevy, can we, ex not Chevy, you're Chevy. Hi, Justin, oh. Chevy wants to know if we can expect a new boot goofing reel later. New boot goofing. Okay. You have to make Lindsay. To hey, make Chevy, I get the reference. I love it. <laughs> I, I did uh, just get boot lasts in for myself uh, this weekend. So I'm going to be trying to be doing as much new boot goofing as possible. Uh... You you can let it go. Um, I'd recommend it. Depends on the application. If you want it to be removable, then I would say no. They're usually fine. Uh, they they typically don't back out too much. If you are worried about them backing out, then you can definitely lock tight. Where did you go? Mm. Mm. And you love setting spots. It's his favorite. Come on, Justin. No. Hand setting glove snaps are my favorite. Oh, yeah, that's true. Andy loves a glove snap. Or spring snap. Anytime I recommend what spring snaps for a project, he just goes, hmm. The groan. Yeah. Or I get my press dies out. <laughs> Secret tools. I love spring snaps, I think they're wonderful. I have no little to no experience with spots, so not much to say there. I don't. I don't think anybody's gonna say spots are delightful. We used to have a spot setting machine. Oh. That, that thing. It was. It was pretty neat. It had a hopper, but it, the blue bench. Sounds like pretty uh, limited application. Yeah. So machine. it it would only you had to have a hopper for each size spot. So we, I think we had two versions. And it was it was size specific, so you could only set one size because the hopper was with, like it, it went brrr, and these fell down like this brrr, down this little thing, and then it would set it into your thing. There's a metal hammer. <laughs> um, I don't actually know what happened. To, I think we finally sold it to somebody. We had it on our retail for a long time. Gotcha. But look how cute these are. There's so many machines like that. They're just super rad. But I'm like, mm, I wouldn't. Unless use you're it manufacturing. Two years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I think the lady that I think the lady that we finally put, sold it to, she did um, chaps, oh, and she yeah. did awesome. uh, spots on chaps all around the oak. Kitty. Yeah, those look rad, Liz. I know. I think those are the coolest ones of the day. They're pretty fun. I was telling Liz yesterday when we were playing around with these ideas that this is one I would be most likely to make and sell, uh, just because it eats up strip scrap, which I have a ton of. But the like harness rigging for the Western boots is what I'm most likely gonna make for myself. Yeah. Oh, white glue is smart, Chevy, because that leaves them still uh, removable. But they're not like some good old down. Elmers. Is that what you're talking about? Because yeah, it's easier than using the uh, heat break Loctite. So I don't really want to take a torch to my boots. Look, Justin. Oh. Now you could you could do you could do <laughs> like that. Stop motion. <laughs> there we go. Have two pair. Two pair. So, do you have any big plans in Atlanta while you're down there? Other Don't than get a traffic ticket. That's my plan. Is to not get pulled over did again. That again. Well, I got pulled over when we were in in Montana on our way to the show, but I did not get a ticket. Um, because it was a very lovely police officer. Oh, did you guys head into Billings? Yeah, so on our way, yeah, out, out of Billings, where the speed yeah. limit is a lovely 80 miles an hour. Yep. I went 92. Liz. It was fun. It was a real, it was a nice car. Anyways, um, but yeah, so that's just my goal is just to not get ran over because Atlanta drivers are crazy. They and go, but it's like, it's like 90 miles an hour in Atlanta, like yeah. six lanes and 90 miles an hour. 
And you're just like, smaller, here we go. The smaller streets are really fast. There are four lanes is a small street until you get like downtown. Yeah. Uh, Did you get it? Nope. I got those. You got those. Yeah. Be did it. you put those on wrong? What are you talking about? Yeah, you did. That goes here. Well, you know. <laughs> In any case. Okay, it's, it would be d different anyways. <laughs> it's just more different. <sighs> it's fun times. This, I mean, that one's right. I did find... Uh, well, somebody didn't mark those holes, so I thought they were good for that. <laughs> well, I just thought you'd, like, once you got done, you'd just plop them at the end where it made sense. In any case, Atlanta traffic is crazy. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're just making a statement. Yes, ma'am, Susan. It is crazy. I always, it takes me about 10 minutes to be like, all right, I've got my Atlanta pants on. I'm ready to go. Uh, right good. around the downtown area, there is a beautiful like, walking park. It's lovely. Uh, it's near a river or a creek or something there. Uh, it's great. I mean, like hours of walking trail. Yeah. And it's one of the most heavily... Uh, Treed cities I've ever been. It is lovely. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it has really, I like the tall trees everywhere. Beautiful city. All right, guys. Well, we're going to have to redo that one because our <laughs> spots are in the wrong spot. Spots are hard. Or I guess some, some of the spots are in the right spot. And then other ones are in the wrong spot. We got a spot when you just drop them. Yeah, that's fine. It'll be fine, yeah. maybe. All righty. Well, and that's, so that's boot, like jazz up your boots, guys. Have fun with it. Do cool, interesting, neat things. This is renewed boot goofing. Yeah. You know, you got you got an old pair that you're just like, I'm tired of these. Make them into a new pair. Jasma. What's the thing? Yeah. We were looking, there was um, a person that Justin found on Instagram, and she takes old boots, and I believe she cuts the top off, flips it back over, and then, like, jazzes up around the shaft that she cut off, which I thought was really neat. He does not <laughs> love to have an opinion on it. I think it's a very cool idea. Um, I just don't like how it looks. But she would use, she would go and get like really wide uh, ribbon, like different types of ribbon um, and things like uh, like the burlap and things and then use that as a wrap. So if you have a high shafted boot, you can do like a really wide stack um, and do just like a huge cuff. I think somebody had fur on one of them, you know, put a buckle on it, just have a have a good old time. But Very Jack sparrow -y. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. So, yeah. But have some fun. So that's what we got today. Like yep. we were mentioning, Denny will be here on Friday. Um, all about head knives, sharpening, cutting, skiving, all that kind of jazz. So if you need a refresher or would like a little bit of a course or have yeah. some questions about using head knives, join us for that. Um, once and again. I think skiving in general is a lot yeah. of different knives and stuff. Different ways to skive. So... Come up with all your questions. Hit us up with your questions. If you're not able to be here, um, maybe pre-submit a question. You can send it to live at springfieldleather.com. Tony will maybe. You're here Friday, aren't you, Tony? Okay, yeah. So if you have any questions but you won't be here for the live but you would like us to ask them and answer them, you can shoot them over to live at Springfield Leather and we'll get them over to Denny um, for that. But that's the show so hope you guys enjoyed yeah go make some boot cuffs have some fun yeah um tony will be here for live shopping tomorrow all by his lonesome so everybody join him and buy all the things that he sells to you so he'll have fun with that and then those of you no there was we had we we're missing two people on estimates so no giveaways this week but is that the reward for perfect attendance? It is. It I absolutely is free stuff. I love it. We encourage perfect attendance. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been lovely. Um, they will see you on Friday, and I'll see you next week. And I want to see some wild boot decorations in Discord this week. Yeah, that's right.